We're starting up today section 1.6. We're going to represent functions as rules and tables. Um, I kind of enjoy teaching this section. I think it's easy. And if I do a good job of explaining it, I think you'll find it easy. Um, if you're not finding it easy, then there's one of two things in my mind. I'm either doing a poor job of explaining it, in which case, um, let, please tell me so I can try to do something different to make it easy for you. Or you're just not watching the video and not putting in the effort to learn it. Okay, so um, if you're not understanding and you are putting in the effort, please come and see me. It, so if this doesn't make sense, I can help make sense of it for you. Okay. Before I get into all of the technical stuff that the book is going to show you, um, I'm going to start off with a very simple concept. Now this is something that actually I didn't make up myself. I learned this uh, the way. It, I'm teaching it right now from a guy named Sal Khan. He runs the Khan Academy website. And I, he did an unbelievable job of explaining the basics of what a function is, okay? And this is what he said. I'm just telling you what he, what he taught me, all right? So this is not my doing. This is his, all right? A function, in a way, is kind of like a box. It's kind of like a computer, okay? It's a special kind of computer. This computer allows you to put a number into the box, and the box will take that number and do something with it, and it will spit out a number then, after it makes a calculation, it will spit a new number possibly out of the box. Okay, let me give you a, a simple example, and I'm sure you're going to pick up on this pattern pretty quick. Suppose I took zero and plug zero into this box, and then the box spit out one. Okay, and then I went ahead and I said, okay, I'm going to put four into the box, and the box spit out 5. I'm going to plug 10 in the box. And the box takes the 10, and then suddenly it puts out 11. And I'm going to put one more number in the box. I decided to put uh, 7 in the box. 7 is going to get plugged into the box, plugged into the computer, and all of a sudden the computer spits out an 8. I want you to think about, some of you might already have come up with, well, I already know what the box is doing. I'm going to ask you, what is the box doing? And you've probably come up with already, hey, the box, every time you put a number in the box, the box took that number and added one to it. Okay, so in this case, the function, the box, the function, it's saying that this value here equals this value plus one. So let me put this in words. Um, the, what we spit out here equals what we put in. Okay, so let me put down what the box, um, what the box calculated equals what we put in it plus one. Okay, so what we put in the box, what we put in here, when we add 1 to it, that's what the box is going to calculate. Okay, now there's vocabulary that goes with that that I haven't talked about, but I think that's a simple concept. I'm like, Sal Khan did an excellent job of explaining what that is, and I'm just stealing from him, frankly. I'm, this is a great way of teaching it. Okay, but that's what a function is. It's when you take a number put it into a box, and that box takes the number, performs a calculation, and spits out the result. Okay, now, there's terminology we use. We don't call it what the box calculated. We don't, we don't even call it box and all that. The box is the function. Okay, so this is the function. And if you look at the top of page 35, we get into some vocabulary, okay? What we plug in the box is called the domain. So this number you plug in is called the domain. What the box spits out is called the range. So when I plug 10 in the box, 10 was my domain, and it spit out 11, that's the range. Now, actually, in this sometimes, I don't always understand this as a teacher even. And people ask me, why, do we, why does math do this? And I, my honest answer is I don't always know. There's multiple terms we need to know for this. Like the word domain represents what numbers you inputted in the box, and the range is what the box outputted, which is two more terms, and I'm looking at those at the top of, of page 35. This number here is also called an input. 
So I inputted 0, 4, 10, and 7, and then what the box spit out is called the output. That is a second term that we would want to know, okay? Input, output. So domain and input are essentially saying the same thing. Range and output are essentially saying the same thing. <laughs> and if that's not uh, mind-bending enough, which I don't think that's that hard. I d I'm sure for you, you're okay too. Domain and input just means what I'm putting in the box. Range and output is what's being spit out. There's actually a third set of terms that they use for these numbers we place in the box. These numbers are called the domain. They're also called the input. There's a third term. They're also called the independent variable. Okay? Independent. Now think about indep independent means you can kind of do whatever you want. Okay? Independent variable. I can plug anything into the box I want. This number that spit out is called the dependent variable for good reason. All right, the dependent variable. Well, for example, 11. In my example here where when you plugged in 10, you got 11. To get 11, you had to plug in a 10 because when you take 10 and then add 1, you get 11. So the number 11 was dependent upon me plugging 10 into the box. I couldn't have got 11 if I would have plugged in 5, because if I plug in 5, you know what was going to happen. I plugged in a 5 into this box. The box is going to add 1 to it. I'm going to get 6. I can't get 11 unless I plug in a 10. That's why these numbers are called the dependent variable. They depend. To get these numbers, it depends on what you plug in here. All right. So these are aspects of a function in some vocabulary. Domain, input, independent, independent variable, those are the numbers you plug into the box. Range, output, dependent variable is what you get out of the box. Okay, now I'm going to draw a little picture of mathematically how we would show this. Like on homework or things like that, we wouldn't draw this picture to represent this. We would just draw a table, and our table would look like this. Let me uh, quickly draw a nice little table here um, that will look neat. So, you know, you've seen this, I'm sure, before. Here's an XY table. Um, I'm drawing mine vertically right now. Maybe I should, uh, I'll draw it both ways. Sometimes you'll see in the book they'll just draw it horizontally, okay? So here's an XY table, and I plug 0, 4, 10 and 7 into the box, and it, and it outputted or gave me a range of 1, 5, 11, and 8. That's how it would look on paper. I wouldn't draw this whole elaborate picture. I would just draw a table. Or if I want to draw my table horizontally, my x values were 0, 4, 10, 7. These are my, this was my domain input independent variable. And my outputs, or my range, were 1, 5, 11, and 8. Okay, so I guess that's a, actually a fourth thing I could put here. Domain, input, independent variable all indicate the same thing. These are my x values. Range, output, dependent variable, those all kind of mean the same. They are my y values. Now, there's one more important characteristic that a function has that we have to understand, okay? And I'm looking at the top, again, of page 35, and it's the second little bullet point near the very top of the page. It says, a pairing of inputs with outputs such that each input is paired with exactly one output. And as I read that, and maybe you look at it, you might be like, uh, what is that saying, okay? Very simple concept. When you plug something into the box, it can only spit out one value for it to be a function. Okay? That's happened here. I plug zero in the box, it spit out only one result, one. I plug four in the box, it only spit out one result, five. I plug ten in the box, it only spit out one result, eleven. I plug seven in the box, it only spit out one result, eight. That's what a function does. It can only give you one output for each input. Okay? Let me give you another example because sometimes people get confused on this and, and when they do, 
it makes me think I'm not doing a good job of explaining it. So I'm going to try to do the best job I can. Let's say that this happened. I decided to plug uh, 2, 4, 6, and 8 into the box. So I plugged in 2, and I got 10. Then I plugged in 4. I got 10. I plugged in 6. I got 10. I plugged in 8. It spit out 10 again. The question is, is this a function? And many times I'll have students say, well, no, it's not. The answer, yes, it is. This is a function. Well, here's why. When you plugged in 2, how many results did the box spit out? It only outputted one result. It only outputted 10. As long as each input only gives you one output, it's a function. Okay? It doesn't matter that every one of my inputs gave me the same output. As long as each one input only gives me one output, that is a function. Okay, so when I see a table, let me draw a table of this. This table would look like, um, let me make it neat here for us. This table would look like this. Here's x and y, 2, 4, 6, 8. 10, 10, 10, 10. This is definitely a function. When I plugged in 2, I got 10. When I plugged in 4, I got 10. Each input only gave me one output. That is a function. Okay, so maybe we need to talk about what's not a function. Okay, what would be an example that's not a function? Well, here would be a good example of something that's not a function. Ready? Let me draw, redraw this. Let's say I plugged in 1. And plugging in 1 suddenly had the box spitting out 0 and 8. That's not a function. Because my input can only give me one output. And do you notice here, if I plug in 1, I'm getting different outputs. I'm getting multiple outputs. That's not a function. Okay? Let's say I, I plug in another number, 2, and I, I, when I plug in 2, maybe I should use a different color so I can di distinguish. When I plug in 2 in the box, suddenly the box decides to spit out uh, 12 and 20. Okay? Not a function. One input can only give me one output. In this case, my input is giving me more than one output. That, that's, that can't happen. Okay? Um, my table for this, I could see it on my table. Actually, I'm going to show you another way of writing a table. It's called a mapping diagram, and you'll see a picture on this at the bottom of page 35. Um, what they do is they'll put input, output, and it looks kind of like a table, but it, it's, it's just more of a picture than a table. Here's my inputs, and here's my outputs. Okay, so I'm going to have a 1 here and a 2 here, and then I'm going to put 0, 8, 12, 20, and then I'm going to use arrows. When I inputted 1, I got multiple outputs. When I inputted 2, I got multiple outputs. Whenever one input can give you more than one output, that's not a function. Maybe I should just label this here, not a function. Okay, in this case... This is not a function because an input gave me more than one output. Okay? So that's the first main thing, or the, one of the major things I had to make sure you understand today. It's what is a function, how our table would look, which represents a function. Uh, i got to, just a second, I'm getting a phone call. Let me pause here. Okay, so, um, you know, what a function is, we've learned that. What, it, what it, the idea of it is, we've learned how to identify it on a table. We've learned what domain input and independent variable are and what range output and dependent variable are. And that a function has one special characteristic. Each input can only give you one output. If one input can give you more than one output, it's not a function. Okay? And then there's one other major thing we want to do, and actually, let's, let's, before we do that, let's just look at a couple practice problems and we can and walk through it. Like if you look at, in your homework, you go to page 38 real quick, and you look at number four, and the question is identify the domain and range of the function. Well, this is just a vocabulary question. When you look at number four, you see a mapping diagram. Well, remember, the domain is the inputs, and you can see that according to that picture, 3, 5, 7, and 8 were plugged in the box. 
the range is the outputs. That's what the box spit out. Can you see that according to this picture, 7, 5, 3, and 2 were spit out of the box? I'm going to ask you one more question regarding number 4. It's not, they didn't ask this in the book, but I'm going to ask you, is that a function? Is that a function? Um, your answer should be yes it is, because do you notice each input will only give me one output. So when I plug in 3, I only get one result. When I plugged in 5, I only got one result again. When I plugged in 7, I only got one result and so on. Okay? However, look at, go to number 7 now. Okay? Number 7, the question is, uh, tell whether the pairing is a function or not. Well, first of all, let's look at this. Do you see input, output? The inputs, remember, the inputs are the domain. The domain in this would be 1 half, 2 thirds, and 3 quarter. And your outputs are the range. The range would be 0, 1, 2, and, or I'm sorry, 0, 1, 3, and 5. I just wanted to bring that up because, again, that's something we need to know. But the main question here, is this a function? Well, this is obviously not a function in number 7. Do you notice that the input 3 quarters gave you two different outputs? It gave you 3 and 5. Okay? Gave you 3 and 5. Now, I wrote this up here because I always, again, this is what always people get screwed up on right here. Okay, this little thing here. And is this a function? And people see all 5s here and, there and they immediately say no. Okay, that is incorrect. This is a function because, do you notice, when you plug in 0, you only got one output. When you plug in 1, only got one output. Plug in 2, only one output. Plug in 3, only one output. It doesn't matter if they're all the same output. As long as each input can only give you one output, it is a function. Okay? You go ahead and look at number 14. It says, make a table for the function. Identify its range. Okay, let's make a table. So, in number 14, they give you y equals x minus 3. Let me write that down. And actually, what I ought to do real quick, let me just cover up this spot. We don't need this in here right now. We'll get to that later. So we'll just concentrate up here. Y equals X minus 3. Now, remember, the domain is your X values. So if your domain is 12, 15, 22, and 30, and this is your function, that's your box. Okay, so here's a picture of what's going on. This equation is this picture. You're taking X, plugging it into the box. The box is taking X and subtracting 3 from it, and it's spitting out whatever Y is. Okay, so let's do that. If you plug 12 in, the, let's make a table. We're going to plug in 12, 15, 22, and 30. That's my domain. I'm plugging in 12, 15, 22, 30. Let's do that. If you plug 12 in the box, the box is going to take 12 and subtract 3 from it and, and spit out 9. So 9 is one of my ranges. When you plug 15 in the box, the box is going to take 15 and subtract 3 and spit out 12. 12 is a range. When you plug 22 in the box, the box is going to take 22 and subtract 3 and spit out 19. And when you plug 30 in the box, the box is going to take 30, subtract 3, and spit out 27. Can you see your range right here in the table? There's my range. Up here in green, this is my domain. My domain is what I plugged into the box. That's my inputs. My range is what the box spit out accordingly. One more to look at. Uh, they're going to ask us to write a rule for the function. Now, writing a rule means they want us to write an equation. Let me go back a couple slides. Do you remember when we started here? And let me get this out of the way. When we started at the beginning of my... Um, video here. I made up something easy. And, oh, it's actually the, it's right here. I said what we were going to do is we were going to plug in 0 and the box spit out a 1. And when you plugged in 4, the box spit out a 5. And when you plugged in 10, the box spit out an 11. And so on. And I think you probably picked up pretty quick. Hey, whenever you plug something in the box, the box is taking that number and adding 1 to it. When they ask us to write a rule, that means write an equation. Now, remember, this is my y value, and this is my x value. So the rule for this simple example is that y, what the box spit out, equaled what, what x was when you added 1 to it. 
or maybe a better way of saying that would be y would equal whatever you threw into the box plus 1. So y equals whatever x was plus 1. That is the rule for this simple example. When you go to number 20, they're asking us to write a rule. So if you look at the table and think about this, when you plug 0 in the box, you got 2.2. When you plugged 1 in the box, you got 3.2. When you plug 2 in the box, you got 4.2. And when you plug 3 in the box, the box spit out a 5.2. And you might be noticing, well, wait a minute. What's happening is I'm putting a number in the box. The box is taking this number I put in there. It's adding 2.2 to it and then spitting out that result. Well, that would be your rule. Y has to equal whatever you put in the box plus 2.2. That's what they're asking you to do when you write a rule. Okay? And you'll see that. I'm going to do one last quick thing here. You'll see that, and we've already talked about this, uh, so I'm not going to spend more time on that. Um, th you're going to get a worksheet, and it's going to have you fill this out. And so I'll just do one with you real quick here. And if we have more questions, we can do others in class. But in this case, the output is twice the input. Now remember, the output is my y value. The input is my x value. So when you think twice, twice is doubling. So the output, the box, when the box spits out y, when it spits out y, it's, it's taking x and it's doubling it. Well, there's my equation, y equals 2x. Let me just write it this way. So there's my rule. My rule for this is right here. It's y is going to equal x doubled. Twice means double. Okay, let's fill out a table here. Well, my domain is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Well, that's my x value. So that means if you plug 1 in the box, what's the box going to do? It's going to take 1 and double it and spit it out. So if I take 1, put it in the box, I double it, spit it out, I get 2. There's my output. If I plug 2 in the box and it gets doubled, I got 4 now. If I plug 3 in the box and it gets doubled, that's 6. And if I plug 4 in the box and it's doubled, it's 8. Well, can you see your range? I've got to fill in my range. It's 2, 4, 6, 8. And then one other extra thing I'm going to have you do today, I'm going to have you graph that. Well, let's graph these. Let's graph 1, 2. So maybe I should fill this in a little bit because it's kind of a little hard to see here. Let me uh, fill this in. Now, you might be able to see here, here is my x and y axis. I'm trying to darken it in just a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so you can see here's the origin. Okay, so let me graph this. The point 1, 2. 1 right and 2 up. 2 right, 4 up. 3 right, 6 up. And 4 right, 8 up. I have to go and kind of estimate 1, 2. There's 4, 8. There is a picture of that function. So I took the rule. Verbally, I wrote it as an equation. So there's my rule written as an equation. They gave me a domain. I calculated my range. So domain is what you put in the box. Range is what got spit out of the box. And I graphed it. Okay? I think that should be enough to uh, get you going on the homework for the next. And this is a two-day section, so we're going to spend a couple days on this.